our mother church prepared us for this night for four weeks starting the last week of November. And now that Christmas is with us, the question to ask is, what is the best gift you received? What is the best gift that you received? It can be a simple pen to an extravagant house and lot. What is the best gift that you received this Christmas? Could it be a toy for the children, or handkerchief, or towel, or gadget, cell phone, appliances? What is the best gift that you have received this Christmas? And the only answer is Jesus. Because when the Father gave us Jesus, all other gifts paled in comparison with value. Do not forget that the best gift to receive is Jesus. Now if I ask you, what is the best gift you have given? I think you already have a clue. You are not going to say handkerchief or shoes or clothes. You are not going to say a vacation trip. You are not going to say a piece of jewelry. You are going to say the best gift I have given is Jesus. But that is a learned answer. Because truth be told, when we receive expensive big gifts, we become happy. As if that gift is more important than the reason for Christmas. Brothers and sisters, what is the best gift you have received? Jesus. What is the best gift that you can give? Jesus. Because all money, all wrapped gifts, all land titles, all pieces of gold and silver and diamond will have no value separated from God. But then you're going to ask me, how? You're going to ask me, where? Where will I see Jesus? How will I say Jesus? How will I give Jesus? How will I receive Jesus? I will offer you people from whom you can see Jesus. The first type of people are called small people. I am not referring to the size by feet and inches. I am not referring to the size by pounds or kilograms. I refer to the socially small, to the emotionally small, to the politically small, to the economically small, that we can, we feel like we can live without them. If you give gifts to the rich, but you are unkind to the poor, you do not have the spirit of Christmas. If you are polite to the boss, but you are rude to the janitor, you do not have the spirit of Christ. If you can be polite to the chief executive, but you are arrogant to the beggar at the sidewalk, you do not have the spirit of Christ. Because God became small so that it will be easier for us to carry Him. And God became small like a baby so that we will discover, recognize that to be small is to be great in the kingdom of God. The second type of people that you can look for because Jesus is certainly with them are the slow people. I do not refer to speed. Those who are slow to understand. Those who are slow to change. Those who are always late with their commitment. Those who are slow to fulfill their promises. We say, you are late. 
you are tardy, you are not punctual, you are wasting my time. Who invented time? Did the watch came, come from God? Did the clock come from God? No. Christmas tells us that the face of your brother and sister is more important than the face of your golden wristwatch. The face of your brother and sister is more important than the ticking clock. The face of your brother or sister is more important than the face of the watch or the clock. Because God entered our time although He Himself was ageless and timeless. What do we do with the slow people? We laugh, we ridicule, we get impatient. But God chose to be slow. God is not a marathon runner. God chose to be slow so that when we follow Him, we will not get tired so easily. It is so easy to follow Him. He is a slow walker. He is a slow pilgrim. Come, follow me. Small people, slow people. And the third and last group of people are the silent people. The silent people who have no voice. The silent people who are not heard. The silent people who are ignored and taken for granted even if they are shouting to the top of their voices. Remember, my dear brothers and sisters, all growth is silent. If you have to announce your growth, maybe there is something wrong. Because all growth is silent and growth does not call attention for itself. Growth is noticed. That is why we can say, ang bilis mong lumaki. Hindi naman dahil in one minute lumaki. Mabilis lumaki kasi matagal mo na siyang hindi nakita. And with the passage of time, he or she has grown. Silence. Because silence is the language of God. And in the silence of that night, love was born. Tonight, the Lord tells us, I am your gift. I am the gift of the Father to you. And the Father is so generous, you can share me with others too. Tonight, alone, look at the Belen, look at the crib, look at the child in the manger, and then ask him, Jesus, what are you dreaming of? Jesus, what is your dream? In my heart of hearts, I ask the baby Jesus, what are you dreaming of? And he answered and whispered in prayer, I dream of loving you and only you. And even if you're the only person in this world, I would still be born and die and rise. That is how much I love you. I dream of saving you.